you should be able to see my presentation. So again, today's topic is going to be just in, in general, really, um, things you can do to get your website to run quicker and to make sure you're doing everything you can, um, you know, without paying thousands of dollars a month to do the best you can for SEO on your store. And there's a, there's a lot of bits to it. I'm going to cover it from a high level today, and, and I'm happy to, to take a deeper dive uh, into any of this with anyone. Just feel free to shoot me an email after this webinar, and I'm happy to um, get into more detail on any of these topics. But this, this presentation is just really going to talk about a few things from a high level. Some of these things you may know, some of them you may not, um, but that's okay. We're going to just run through them, and we'll see what we'll see where we go with it. So. The first thing I wanted to do is just take a moment and actually define what SEO is. And most people know what the term stands for now, of course, search engine optimization. But what actually does that mean? It, it's really the process or the act of configuring your store with the proper content, the proper structure, the proper wording to have the best chance to be seen by search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, places like that. And of course, the, the main goal being to get more eyeballs on your store, get more people to know that your store exists, right? And the best kind of way to do that is, you know, well, there's two main ways. There's, there's the paid way and the non-paid way. And that's what the next page is going to talk about, is when you hear about different types of SEO, there's, there's two versions. There's off-site SEO and on-site SEO. SEO. And, and so what, what do we mean by that when we say those things? So offsite SEO is going to be the SEO that you pay for. And this is going to be um, whether you're paying an SEO firm to write blog articles for you or, and try to get those blog articles linked on other websites so that backlinks get created. And backlinking is a, a very traditional but not free way to do SEO, basically part of Google's algorithm um, or what we know or what we believe Google's algorithm to be. Nobody truly knows what that algorithm is except for the guys that wrote it. <laughs> but um, part of what, what Google does like to see, the, the more backlinks or think of it like this, the more mentions that your website has on other websites around the world, the more clout and validity it gives to your website. So you know, if it detects that there are 600 other websites around the world that link back to your website in one way, shape, or form, that validates your website more than if you had two, right? So that's the reason why, shoot, this happens to us at Core Commerce all the time. This is the reason why people will contact me and pay me money to guest post on my blog or add a link into a blog and it doesn't just happen to core commerce it happens to all businesses like ours as well i mean the reason why somebody is willing to pay to do something like that is because the value they get back from the backlink is worth more than the money the one-time fee that they may pay to me or somebody else to do something like that right and and if i'm working for an seo firm and i have a client that's paying me four thousand dollars a month to do SEO work, you know, it's not a big deal for me to spend a few hundred dollars a month of that money, you know, creating backlinks and paying people to post links. So it most definitely is something you pay for. Uh, I have people that will come to me and ask to do link swapping, which potentially is a free way to do it. But I mean, both parties have to be willing to do it and see the value in, you know, I'll, I'll add a link to an article of mine if you add a, my link to an article over here. and you know, very, all parties can agree on the value of doing stuff like that. That's another way to do it w without necessarily having to pay for it. But um, most traditional ways, you know, to, to get backlinks added by paying like that. And um, other ways to do that would be to have your name mentioned in forums. And, you know, but um, there are a lot of different rules and different forums around the world that restrict you from mentioning people by name and there's all kind of little things like that that you have to be, pay attention to but um, that's really the main offsite there's other things for offsite you know by using google adwords um, 
to buy links and keywords in Google and having a My Business page, which I'll talk about here at the end of this presentation. Um, those things like that where, where it's not something you're physically doing in the website itself to try to drive traffic to the website is that all of those things can be thrown in that off-site bucket, right? Um, the other one is on-site SEO, which as you could probably decipher is anything you're doing within the website itself. I mean, the way the website looks, the way the website's worded, what content's on what page, where, where are my calls to action? All the different things to help what the term you, I'm sure you've all heard of before, organic SEO. Um, all these different things that you can do within the store itself to try to just as best you can optimize um, how the page is going to look and how Google's going to see the page when it indexes it. So what kind of on-site SEO does core commerce offer um, in the system? So core commerce allows you to modify content as all of you I'm sure already have done many times. Um, and, and you can do that in many different ways, you know, by just adding your own custom product descriptions and category descriptions and being able to add your own content pages and being able to add little snippets of text, you know, for example, on your view cart screen or your checkout screen. Some of that is there and to add so that you can show the end customer something on the screen, but you can also add and word those things in very specific ways to so that when Google sees those words in your page, you know, just adds that little extra bit of description to what the page is. Um, and there's also, you know, the meta information, meta titles and descriptions. And I've seen uh, a lot of core commerce customers over the years. I mean, uh, definitely a minority, but, but more than you would think that, um, you know, the, all their products exist in their store and they're selling online and things are going okay. And come to find out that they never added any meta information into any of their products or categories. And when they did that, you know, they, they would see an increase or in their sales or their, it would go up a little bit over time, but it just doing those things makes the page a little more descriptive. It gives Google a little more information about what your page is. And maybe that causes you to be on page one, two or three of a Google search versus page 20 or 30 or 40. Right. Um, and the one thing about this, about SEO, and especially on-site SEO, is it's not an exact science. There's a lot of data out there and a lot of tools out there that can help, you know, you get a lot of the way there, but it, you'll never under, you know, 100% know exactly what the cheat code is because it changes from time to time too. So with all that said, um, I'll talk a little more now about the meta information. And so any product you add in core commerce or any content page you add or any category you add has the ability for you to specify what the meta title is and the description and the keywords, as well as, you know, things like the product description and a product page or the teaser or the images that you upload. Uh, all those things can benefit you SEO wise. The meta description title and the keywords all do a good job of just adding content to the, the, the source code of the page so that when Google indexes it, it's looking for those pieces of data. And if you use those pieces of data correctly, it can help make that page get a better page rank, which is the, another term you can write down. Page rank is the main score that Google will give to any page. And the better that rank does, the more better it's going to rank you in its search results. Now, when you do a search on Google, you may notice that there is a, a couple of different sections and, you know, you'll see the, the sponsored links and then you'll see the organic links below that. So the sponsored links are the ones at the top. Those are the ones people are paying for and they're purposely paying to be on the, at the top of that page. And then below that, you'll see all the organic results and those are all the links that just naturally show up in that order based on who's got the best page rank over time and you know, there's, there's all kind of different factors that will determine what your page rank is. The content of what's on your page, including meta information is part of it. The, the speed in which your page loads is a part of it. Um, how long your page has existed is a part of it. You know, there's, there's many little aspects to it, but in the end, it is still in part a guessing game to really truly understand what it's gonna take. 
So Core Commerce supports the meta title, the meta description, the meta keywords for adding a product, adding a category, adding a content page. Um, for products and categories, it also supports descriptions and images. Um, I don't know a lot of people that use the category image. Um, uh, some do, um, but, but it just depends on how you want to organize your page. But I um, mean, I'll talk a little bit about images too as we go on through this. But um, some tips on writing some of this content. You know, it's one thing for for Core Commerce to support you being able to tell me, tell it what a meta title would be or a description. It's another thing for that description to be descriptive and in the eyes of Google, right? Um, so, so Core Commerce can give you the, the shovel, but it can't control or it can't, it can't really do anything to help with how well you dig a hole, I guess is the best analogy I could come up with for that. So all of these things, like I said, you can do and you can add into the system. Um, and, and back to the digging a hole analogy, you know, it's really about giving Google and Bing and Yahoo as much data as you can possibly give them um, about what the page is about. And those meta description and the meta title do a really good job of that. And there's other, everything else on the page plays a role as well. Well, uh, the meta keywords used to be a very, very big piece of the puzzle. And then, you know, studies have shown and research has shown that it's not, as big a deal as it used to be, although it's still definitely part of it. Um, but the keywords are not, don't, don't appear to be taken into account as much as they used to be. So seeing on the screen here, you know, let's say you, you have a product called, you know, have a baby carriage type product you're selling. And, you know, so I came up with just a good example of what a good meta description right here. And that should actually say good meta description, not Google meta description. Um, you know, but a description that, that uses keywords like sturdy, reliable, carriage, um, infant, toddler, young child, all these different variations on what somebody might be searching for when looking for this product, right? So, and then the fact that I just mentioned, you know, if it happens to come in different colors, you could mention that, you know, things of that nature. But you can see the difference between that and having a meta description that just says baby carriage or, you know, you, you, you can see the, the point of that. Google's going to see that first one and, and just have a lot more info and understand a lot more about what this product actually does versus that, that other description. And there are rules in um, as far as creating descriptions um, for meta descriptions is itself. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's this, this is the screen I wanted. Um, for example, the meta description, um, you know, there, there's rules that Google will follow. So Google uh, technically doesn't will, will kind of truncate a description. So if your description is too long, then, you know, after about 160 characters or so is what, it, is what a lot of research shows is, is what Google actually does. So if your meta description is longer than 160, chances are it gets cut off and Google doesn't even read what happens after character 160. So uh, the recommended length length is anywhere between 50 and 160 for a really good description. Um, and if your description is only 10 characters long, Google's going to take that into account too. I think it's just not descriptive enough, right? So it's things like that, the titles, and, and there are tools you can download. There's one called Screaming Frog SEO Checker, which you can then let it run on your website and it, and it tells you, hey, here's, I went through all your product pages and Here's so many products don't have a meta description. Here's how many products have too short a meta description or too long of a meta description. And it can give you all that data so that you can go manually make all those updates and, and either shorten descriptions, extend them, make them more descriptive, whatever ends up being required on that. And I can, uh, if anybody wants any links on any of those tools, um, one of them is called Screen, I guess it's Screaming Frog SEO evaluator I think I can't remember the exact name of it but there's a there's a few different tools out there that do that kind of thing for you and then there's also some some links online too to help you with page speed so you can just um, put in your URL and it'll tell you you know everything that it that it finds about how fast your page loads why it loads at the speed it does what recommendations it can give you to speed it up if, if any things of that nature. So if anybody wants some of those links, in fact, I'll just probably gather a few of those links and share it with everybody who registered for this webinar. So you guys can take a look at those things if you've never looked at that kind of stuff before. 
Uh, speaking of speed, uh, um, you know, product images and category images uh, are something that all of you have, of course, selling online. Um, the biggest speed issue I've ever, uh, I've seen customers have with core commerce is it's not anything to do with the shopping cart system itself. It's just the fact that the images are too big. And when I say too big, I don't mean visually. I mean, you know, file size on the server. So an image that can look exactly the same and be the exact same size, you know, can be optimized and maybe only be 40 or 50 kilobytes in size. Or you can have another image that's not optimized in any way. It looks exactly the same to the human eye, but it's 500 kilobytes in size for whatever reason. It could be the format you saved it in or it just could have been the program you used to, to save the image or whatever. Um, and if you, you know, let, if you have a page that has 40 images on it and they're all 500 kilobytes in size, that's obviously a lot more content that the browser has to load which is gonna affect how, how fast the page loads. It certainly will do so. So um, core commerce can help in certain ways um, to give you some, some control over what it wants to show the images as far as uh, visually on the screen. It can also help you with file size to an extent, but um, there's only so much it can do to force your image to not be very big, right? So um, with that said, um, we do have some improvements that we're working on to kind of limit how big an image can be when you upload it. And again, I'm talking file size to, to kind of help with that situation. But optimizing images, there, there are online tools that you can use to optimize images. There are apps you can download on if you have a MacBook or a Windows laptop or computer or whatever. Um, there are tools you can download to help you, you know, in bulk optimize your images. So you don't have to, you know, edit each image one at a time and change it. There are tools that, that will resize them in mass for you very quickly and get images, you know, I would say for a standard product image that's like 200 by 200 size, you know, that image doesn't need to be more than 30 or 40 kilobytes in size max. And it can even be smaller than that. But if all of your individual images you're uploading and they're all 100 kilobytes, 130 kilobytes a piece, that just adds up. It really does add up over time and can, you know, add a half a second or a second to a page load time, you know. Um, so it's, it's something to definitely keep in mind. Another thing, as you may have read on the screen, is the home page. So when people upload images to that Nebo slider, you can use on the home page. I've seen some slider images that are 4,000 by 2,000 in size and the system is kind of just visually resizing it to fit it in but it's not resize it's not going to resize that image down to an appropriate web level it's expecting you to have done that before you uploaded it so if you don't you know I've seen I saw one customer I forget which customer it was but they their slideshow started to load and it literally took five seconds just for one image to load because the, the image was just simply that big and so when I went in and I, I believe, I don't think I did it personally, but uh, when we went in and optimized those images for that person and re-uploaded them, boom, the, the whole homepage loaded in half a second. So it was, things like that can definitely have an effect um, on the side, the load of the page. And the, and, and the page rank that we talked about earlier um, is definitely affected by the, the loading, the speed of the page as well as, as part of that factor. And, you know, back to the screen again, just, you know, optimizing content, making sure everything is there um, is going to be the most beneficial way to do it. Making sure that your descriptions, you know, and, and the same can go for not just meta descriptions, but the same advice can go for product descriptions and category descriptions because Google's going to read through all that stuff too. So having a description for the product that is, you know, not just one sentence, it it's two or three sentences. It's not too long, but it's not too short. It's using positive keywords in here that, that can potentially direct people to this page as opposed to just saying, this is a great shirt, you should buy it, you know, and saying more descriptive, but you know, this is polyester shirt, it's very comfortable, you know, kind of getting just creative like that with the lay lot. And that's, and that's with a lot of SEO firms, you know, if you're paying them a few thousand dollars a month to do something like that for you, that's part of what they would do. They, they would go in and help you write all that content. You know, um, you can do, of course, do that stuff yourself, but um, mm, yeah, and sometimes it, it helps to have other people help you do that stuff. But 
and, and the last thing I want to mention is if you've met, if you haven't done this yet, you can see the little screenshot there where Core Commerce is is on the map. So Core Commerce has its own Google My Business page. But if you haven't done this yet, I would definitely do it. It's another positive step you can take to just legitimize your your Core Commerce store in the eyes of Google. So once your business profile exists and it can associate itself with the domain name of your website, it just gives you a little more clout that, hey, this is a legit website. It, it, everything's on the up and up. The registration in Google My Business just adds an extra couple brownie points to what you're doing. And, you know, that's that really takes care of it. And so if you haven't done that, I would definitely recommend doing it. You just go to google.com slash business to do that. And with that said, um, I think that's the end of what I had as far as a presentation is concerned. Um,